Well, I'm Chris Cannon for Cardiosource to review the 10 points to remember from the 2013 AHA ACC uh, Obesity Society Guideline for Management of Overweight and Obesity in Adults. So key point number one is that there are approximately 78 million adults in the United States who are obese, which places them at risk for morbidity from a variety of conditions, including diabetes, coronary heart disease, and stroke. An expert panel was assembled to first develop a list of critical questions to be addressed. Five targeted questions were selected based on relevance to healthcare providers who frequently work with obese patients and to provide an update on the benefits and risks of weight loss achieved with various approaches. Not included were questions related to genetics of obesity, binge eating disorders, pharmacotherapy, and cost effectiveness of interventions to manage obesity. So the five critical questions were addressed and centered on A, weight loss and reduction of cardiovascular disease risk factors, events, and mortality. Current cut points for body mass index, or BMI, and waist circumference in relation to cardiovascular disease risk. C, different diets in relation to weight loss and weight maintenance. D, comprehensive lifestyle intervention programs for weight loss and maintenance of weight loss. And E, bariatric surgery for weight loss and maintenance of weight loss and impact on cardiovascular risk factors and mortality over the short and long term. Key point number two, providers are recommended to measure height and weight and calculate BMI at annual visits or more frequently to identify patients who need to lose weight. Use of current cut points for overweight, a BMI greater than 25, up to 29.9 kilograms per meter squared, and obesity greater than or equal to 30 kilograms per meter squared, should be continued to identify adults who may be at increased risk for cardiovascular disease. A cut point for obesity, greater than 30 kilograms uh, per meter squared BMI, should be used to identify adults at increased risk for all-cause mortality. Patients who are overweight or obese should be counseled that their BMI level places them at increased risk for cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and all-cause mortality. Three. Waist circumference should be measured at annual visits or more frequently in overweight and obese adults. Cut points for increased waist circumference defined by the National Institutes of Health or the World Health Organization can be used. Patients who have an increased waist circumference should be counseled that their BMI level places them at increased risk for cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and all-cause mortality. Four, overweight and obese adults with cardiovascular risk factors, including elevated blood pressure, hyperlipidemia, and hyperglycemia, should be counseled that even modest weight loss, three to 5% of body weight, can result in clinically meaningful benefit for triglycerides, blood glucose, uh, glycosylated hemoglobin, and development of type two diabetes. Greater weight loss, greater than 5%, can further reduce blood pressure, improve lipids, both LDL uh, cholesterol and uh, improve high-density lipoprotein cholesterol, and reduce the need for medications to control blood pressure, blood glucose, and lipids. Five. A diet prescribed for weight loss is recommended to be part of a comprehensive lifestyle intervention a component of which includes a plan to achieve reduced caloric intake. Any of the following methods can be used to reduce food and calorie intake. A, prescribe a 1,200 to 1,500 kilocalorie per day for women or 1,500 to 1,800 kilocalorie per day for men, and those can be adjusted to an individual's body weight. B, prescribe a 500 kilocalorie per day or 750 kilocalorie per day energy deficit, and C, 
prescribe one of the evidence-based diets that restricts certain food types, such as high uh, carbohydrate foods, low fiber foods, or high fat foods, in order to, to create an energy deficit by reduced food intake. Key point six. Prescribing a calorie-restricted diet should be based on the patient's preferences, health status, and preferably with a referral to a nutrition professional for counseling. Seven, overweight and obese adults who would benefit from weight loss are recommended to participate in at least six months of a comprehensive lifestyle program, which assists participants to adhere to a low-calorie diet and increase physical activity. Such programs are recommended to include high intensity, that is greater than 14 sessions in six months, comprehensive weight loss interventions provided at individual or group sessions by a trained interventionalist. Electronically delivered weight loss programs, including by telephone, that include personalized feedback from a trained interventionalist can be prescribed for weight loss, but may result in smaller weight loss uh, than face-to-face -face interventions. Some commercial-based programs that provide a comprehensive lifestyle intervention can be prescribed as an option for weight loss, provided there is peer-reviewed published evidence in, of their safety and efficacy. Eight. It is recommended that very low-calorie diets, defined as less than 800 kilocalories per day, uh, be used only when medical monitoring and trained providers are available, and only as part of a high-intensity lifestyle intervention. Nine, weight loss maintenance is recommended to be a component of a patient's overall weight loss plan. Participation in a long-term beyond one year, a comprehensive weight loss maintenance program is strongly recommended. Programs should include regular contact with trained personnel, face-to-face -face or telephone delivered, to encourage high levels of physical activity, 200 to 300 minutes per week, monitor body weight at least weekly, and adhere to a reduced calorie diet needed to maintain lower body weight. And key point 10, among adults with a BMI of greater than or equal to 40 or BMI greater than or equal to 35 with obesity-related comorbid conditions who have not responded to behavioral treatments with or without pharmacotherapy, bariatric surgery may be an appropriate option. For individuals with a BMI less than 35, there is insufficient evidence to recommend for or against undergoing bariatric surgery procedures. But as you can see, this is a terrific new guideline for management of uh, patients who are overweight or obese, uh, as nicely summarized by Dr. Jackson here for these 10 points. I think working uh, with patients to achieve weight loss through calorie reduction and increased exercise should hopefully benefit lots of patients that we see. For Cardiosaurus, I'm Chris Cannon.